Hi there, I'm Jill Shaw, Rebecca A. Boylan, and Thomas W. Sidlick, Curator of European Art from 1850 to 1970 at the Detroit Institute of Arts. I'm here at home today under Governor Whitmer's Stay Home, Stay Safe order, but wanted to take the opportunity to stay connected with you, my DIA family. I have to say this photo represents a pretty common occurrence for me these days. My two-year-old daughter and I often stare out our front window onto an empty street. All is typically pretty quiet, still, and peaceful, with the exception of the occasional squirrel, bird, or dog walker that passes by. And I ask my daughter to point to the trees, the roofs on the houses, and the cars parked in the driveway across the street. But as I'm here at home missing the DIA and its incredible collection, I recognize there's something strikingly similar about this scene that I so frequently look at these days and the one depicted in one of my very favorite works in the collection of the DIA. This painting by French post-impressionist artist Georges Seurat. Here Seurat depicts a coastal scene, presumably at low tide, because we see empty boats beached on the sandy shore. The outline of a village in, a, in the distance suggests that there is some kind of life and culture in this environment, but any suggestion of ongoing activity is missing. The whole scene seems still and somehow frozen in time, but its beautiful luminescence is striking, and somehow the landscape feels warm and inviting despite the lack of any apparent activity. I love this painting for so many reasons. Um, and first, I love it because it speaks to the new direction of art in France in the 1880s and the changes to Impressionism that Seurat pushed forward. Particularly, Seurat thought that the practice of painting should be more rational and disciplined than the Impressionists did. Instead of the sketchy, quick style of Impressionism, Seurat here shows his interest in carefully building up mass and form uh, very methodically by applying many, many dots of color and using principles of color science instead of painting just the forms that he saw in front of him. So here, for example, is a detail of the boats on the beach and the village buildings to show how he constructed his forms out of these many, many dots of different colors. From a distance, the paintings are recognizable and comprehensible. But as you move closer, the painting seems to disintegrate before your eyes. Many of you might know this painting from the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. One of the great scenes in the film was shot at the Art Institute of Chicago, where this painting is now located. It's called A Sunday on the Grand Jat, and it's arguably Seurat's most famous painting. This monumental mural-sized work is not just famous because it was in a movie, but it was really important for the history of art as well. Seurat exhibited it at what would be the eighth and last of a series of exhibitions that we now call the Impressionist Exhibitions. This painting really signaled the end of Impressionism as people knew it and a new direction for art. Instead of focusing on painting quickly out of doors, like the work of master impressionist Claude Monet, for example, Seurat's work was really carefully composed and practiced and studied, um, something that Seurat really wanted to bring back to contemporary painting practice. Le Grand Jatte, for example, was the result of approximately 28 drawings, 28 panels, and three larger canvases that he made in preparation for his final composition. At the right here on the screen is one of the preparatory drawings Seurat made that happens to be in the DIA's collection. It was beautifully created in black crayon, and I believe it's related to the woman seated near the center of the composition holding a parasol. But Seurat didn't throw everything important to the Impressionists out the window. This painting was one of two that Seurat painted in 1889 at La Crotois, a town located in northern France on the English Channel, a region that was very important to the Impressionists and that they painted many times. So here, in a sense, we see Seurat at once following an Impressionist tradition, but radically changing it at the same time. Instead of feeling like this scene is a fleeting one that could change in an instant, 
he conveys a sense of stillness and calm. And there's a kind of a, a sense of permanence in his subject matter. And this was very different from Impressionist practice. Something else I also love about this painting is its frame. Seurat was so careful and thoughtful about his paintings, as well as their display and how they connected with the walls on which they were hung. And in 1887, he began thinking about, his, about painting his frames in colors complementary to the adjacent colors in the painting. And in 1888, he began painting borders directly on his canvases. And in this detail of our painting, we see all of that. Only a handful of Seurat's original painted frames still exist because for the most part, people didn't like them and disposed of them. And knowing that there are only a handful of these left in existence, you can imagine how thrilled I was to join the DIA and become the steward of this incredible work of art. But I did stop in my tracks early on in my tenure at the DIA when I came across this photo in our museum's archives. Here you can see our Seurat painting displayed without its original frame in this photograph of the interior of a home. And I learned that this was an installation shot of the work installed um, in the home of Robert Tannehill, the generous DIA patron that gave this work and so many more uh, to the museum. I can only surmise that Tannehill, like earlier collectors of Seurat's work, also did not like the frame or didn't like how it worked with his home decor and he replaced it. Luckily, he had the foresight to keep the frame knowing that it would be a treasure for the DIA in the future. I have to say, I was a little nervous to see this photo of the painting not in its original frame in our archives. And I was relieved when we were able to examine the back. The painting rarely gets deinstalled, but on this one occasion, I was able to snap this photo of the back of the frame where Seurat's name is beautifully inscribed in blue paint. And I have to say, I did feel reassured. But when I get back to the museum, I don't think I'll ever be able to look at this painting in the same way. A work that often strikes me as empty will now always be full of life. I will always connect it to these moments where my daughter and I were staring out the window, pointing to the grass, looking at the colors of the surrounding houses and pointing to the trees and the birds. And that's another re reason for me to love this painting even more than I did before. I'm going to keep thinking about the objects in the DIA's collection that I love and that resonate for me in new ways. And I hope you will too. Stay safe and we look forward to seeing you again at the museum as soon as possible. Take care.